Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Tours and Tournaments. So, the first thing we're going to be doing in today's episode is we need to get an educator for our daughter. And I think, given our, you know, our experience with our previous daughters, I think it would be best for us to educate her ourselves. Now, this will not result in the best education, more than likely. Maybe not, though. Uh, but we can pick her traits, which is really what's important when it comes to her accepting going to the church. And so, yeah, I think it makes sense that our character, you know, just given what's happened with our, our, our older daughters. Oh, damn. He's now replaced us as the head of Dynasty. Yeah, that keeps happening. That's kind of one of the problems with us not being a king, unfortunately. Uh, so, this Duke we can now make into our friend. He's been working on... Uh, learning our language and yeah, that's exactly what we want to do here. We've been trying to become a friend with him uh, So is this the attempt to assassinate him? Uh, well, we can just make him not feel well. I don't think we should spend the money When we're gonna succeed in this assassination anyways, I mean isn't it supposed to happen like very very soon Although if he dies that way, then I don't think it uh I mean, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I wouldn't imply that we did it. Uh, it wouldn't be a secret of ours. If this was going to take longer to do, then, then we'd go with that route. I guess 30 gold would be worth it. But yeah, I don't think so in this case. Yeah, I think we should just go with this one. Because, yeah, he'll be dead in two months. Most likely. And now we're back to being the dynasty head. Okay, not entirely sure why that flip flop there. Kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, here's the chance to assassinate him. Well, that's interesting. We're actually going to gain stress due to being gregarious. Uh, this is the first time we've attempted to assassinate anybody. So yeah, that does result in stress. But I think in this case it makes sense for him. He wants him dead. He, you can only disrespect uh, his pride so many times before Raymond feels like he has to resort to something. Uh, so we can also go ahead and let this marriage happen. Uh, though, no, we don't have to. I think she actually did a uh, select a good, a good marriage here. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let them, let them do that marriage. Though of course their children will not be of our dynasty, but that's okay. She's already got uh, several children of our dynasty, three to be exact, including a son. Won't matter for the inheritance, uh, but yeah, it's not like we'd be able to get her a good marriage here. Uh, I mean, we might be able to get something, but she's not gonna get in titles or anything like that. Uh, we did get to the next level of fame, so that got us the higher opinion and more knights. But yeah, well, the next one is the last one, Living Legend. And I did expect we'd get to there, given how much, uh... Oh, well, maybe that was not... Oh, it was thwarted. So he's gonna be watchful, making it more difficult. Maybe I should have spent the 30 gold. <laughs> Alright, so that's unfortunate. We have to redo it. So does that mean we lose all the supporters? No, we don't lose all the supporters. We just gotta wait. Yeah, I should have spent the thirty gold. Clearly, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, so we can negotiate some alliances. So this is our cousin down there. All right. So yeah, we won't negotiate with him, but uh, the countess here. Yeah, we'll definitely do that alliance. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Oh, we have a another character here, our cousin. He said the Luzion Dynasty. Uh, but he would not be willing to accept that. I don't know why it's up here then. If he's not willing to accept it. Alright, so that's that guy. And that's this guy here. And also imprison criminals? Okay. Yeah, I don't think we'll make use of any of those right now. Alright. Oh yeah, we just gotta restart this. So that's kind of unfortunate. And... Is that Bastard Child? It is. So another Bastard Child, though, is of our dynasty. Because he doesn't have a, a known father. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think the name matters that much. He does have the hell trait, though. He might make a good knight in the future. 
for his brother. So probably not a, a name. We could call him Albert. Yeah, not a name of the dynasty since he's a bastard. And then this is a problem with our daughter Rosa. So this is the only one of our daughters who hasn't had any children yet, other than of course our, our youngest. She's quarreling with her mother, or excuse me, with her grandmother. All right, so we overhear them talking. Unbelievable, Rosa shouts. How can a scullion like you believe you are the ideal manifestation of de Toulouse family virtues? I'm clearly far more deserving of that distinction than you are. I mean, neither of them really fit our virtues outside of the ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Because they know fighting in the family, and we enter the room to break up their fight, or we could just let them crawl in peace, which we're gregarious, so we don't want to go with that. So we're going to get involved. So as I walk into the room, Rosa turns to face me. I'm glad you're here, Raymond. Oh, that's what she just calls us? Our daughter just calls us Raymond? <laughs> Not father? <laughs> Won't you please talk some sense into your mother? She's being completely unreasonable. So yeah, we can, we can pick a side here. And I don't see us picking our daughter or our mother's side. As a gregarious character, we'd probably want to do the diplomacy challenge, though... As an arrogant character, you might just go with this one. Uh, that we're clearly the best day to lose around. And insult them both here. I think we're probably going to go with the diplomacy challenge. We get more diplomacy lifestyle points. Both of these are fitting for our character. And yeah, we'd instead improve opinion with them. So yeah, we'll go with that option. And we got challenged to a board game. With who? Oh, this count over here. The one who we wanted to attack, but, but couldn't. I mean, we could do that instead of fighting on the battlefield, since King can't stop us from doing that. Sure, why not? Let's accept that. So the greatest game, chess. So Count Boson is already waiting to begin our little chess match, sat, sat waiting with a competitive grimace writ large across his features. We're neck and neck, though neither of us is even close to victory. Don't feel too bad, drawls my opponent, cracking his knuckles. I win at chess like I make friends. Alarmingly easy. Alright, so this is the, the martial uh, challenge here, which is countered by intrigue. This is the intrigue challenge countered by learning, and this is the learning challenge countered by martial. Uh, we're not good at any of those. The only thing we could really do well is diplomacy, which isn't going to help you much in a chess game for the most part. Yeah. So, I mean, our, our highest stats would be the tie between the Intrigue and the Marshal. So really you want to base it off of what his stats are. And he's in the same situation. I mean, he's even worse at Intrigue. Okay, so what you might want to do is the Marshal Challenge. Since he can't even counter that, his intrigue is so garbage. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do this. So a strong sword arm is a strong die arm. That's what we'll go for. So our match marches on. Boson continues with a robust attempt at a coherent strategy. Uh, so we're still neck and neck. If war was as easy as chess, I'd rule the I'd rule the world by now. Last my opponents, but then that's just me. Uh, so again, same options here. Probably makes most sense to continue going for this because he can't counter it. But you can also consider trying to counter him. So like, if you wanted to, because he's probably not going for entry. I don't know what he'd be going for though. I mean, Marshall's countered uh, counters learning, and that's his highest. So yeah, it's probably best to go for this one, honestly. So he'll keep going for that. So this is all the same here, but my, this is all going much better than I expected, exclaims my opponent. You're not a difficult foe at all. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to be rude, just being honest. Well, now he's insulting us. God. <laughs> is he the next one that's going to have to die? Uh, we won't assassinate, but yeah, we really want to declare war on this guy. Uh, if the king dies, though, you know, maybe we'll, we'll see the uh, crown authority be reduced eventually, and then we can declare war without needing claims. Uh, we can also work on trying to get a claim. That'd be an option as well. Uh, I say claim. I meant uh, a hook. That's what I meant. So that we can declare war on this guy. Uh, and then we'll just take his territory. He has those two counties there. 
So yeah, we'll probably just keep on going with the same option. I just think it's the best one in this particular case. Though, because we keep going for the same option, nothing's happening here, so I don't think we're countering each other. So I generally don't know what is easier. Easier laments my opponents, beating you at chess or telling the tale of your embarrassing loss. And he just keeps on talking smack here. We win the game. All right, so with a smug, style, a smug smile, I place my final piece upon the board. This game of chess is mine. Another fine victory on my indisputable rise towards the role of king of games. Nothing but the shallow husk of a man is left to Bosun. He can't believe I won. And we kind of uh, answered his insults with a victory here, so maybe don't. So maybe don't need revenge at the moment. Uh, but we can say an excellent match. We'll gain strength because we're gregarious and arrogant. Instead, we can say, bow before me, you fiend. We could become a rival with him. And we'd probably want to go with that option. We could instead say, I'd love to play again sometime, and we'll gain stress. So I'm guessing that these options here, the gregarious is actually reducing the stress that we would gain due to being arrogant, or at least with this one. But perhaps with this one as well, because I don't know why these would affect, uh, why the gregarious trait would affect these in a negative way. Uh, so I think that's what's happening here. So yeah, I think this one makes the most sense after all that smack talk he did. So we'll go with that. Uh, but yeah, we did gain more experience for the half the looter trait. Trying to step up our wit. And get it up to the to the next level. We lost opinion with Count Roger because of our uh, Chancellor. Cause she's not uh she's not oppressive. She's not bad either though. And our daughter can now get married. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and let that get established. This is that alliance with the uh, the Duke of Brittany. And that unfortunately does mean that she left us as spy master though. All right, so that's, that's a bummer. But it shouldn't impact this too much because we only lost the 4% and uh, we should be able to get somebody who can at least get that back up. And in fact, she's back. So let's go ahead and put her in place. Yeah, I saw that she wanted a position there. So yeah, we'll put her back in place. And yeah, now she loves the skin. And she's not not bad at all. So we're just waiting five months for the next assassination attempt. Let's see if that's successful. Yeah, she left our court. Uh, how much longer before our son is of age? So his birthday's in April. So just a few months, and then we'll be doing the grand wedding. So I'm glad we'll be able to get that in today's episode. Also, we swayed him. All right, excellent. So this is about the murder attempt on the king. Some of our minions are intercepting his letters, and we can we can read them since we know his language. So we could translate them ourselves. That would result in us gaining stress. We'll get the personally translated letters, so increasing this game's success chance. Yeah, I can see us doing that. We'll take the stress for that. I don't know why we wouldn't do it. Nothing would indicate that we wouldn't. We'd be proud to show how, how skilled we are and to use our skills. Uh, so a cask of wine. This is the attempt to kill him again. Let's see if it's successful. And it was. So we killed him. So of course the negative here is that we now have the penalty. Uh, we have the, the secret. Yeah, we killed him. I guess we'll go ahead and read this real quick, but yeah, we got something exciting that just happened there. Uh, a cask of wine. King Gilham is dead, walled up and soon to be forgotten. He followed me willingly, drunk on merriment and wine, into the cellar. After many glasses of fine wine, he fell readily asleep and didn't even stir as I brought out a trial and methodically bricked up the exit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fortunately, no one seems to notice the queer new wall in my basement. Wow. That's what happens when you slight Raymond. He did it himself. We had all these agents. We had a food taster. We had control of his food taster. <laughs> we had all these agents. But we did it ourselves. <laughs> How does nobody know that that he disappeared at our you know at our castle? In our cellar. <laughs> I don't know how uh nobody knows this. He disappeared without a trace on your orders. <laughs> so nobody knows what happened to him. Wow. Okay. So we're just assuming he's dead, I guess. That was quite quickly. I didn't really wait for, <laughs> to to put another uh, to put his heir in place, did they? So that's what happens 
when you slight Raymond. You get bricked up into a basement wall. Wow. Okay, so the exciting thing here is that we are now the regent. So that would figure, I and mean, we are easily the most powerful one in the realm, so it makes sense that we'd be the regent. And, and that was another way how our king slided us, uh, because he refused to make us regent when we were rightfully the regent. I mean, you can't control almost half of France, and then they just say, oh, we're not going to be the regent when he, like, you know, goes on a little trip. He just didn't trust us at all, which, you know, obviously it was wise not to trust us. Uh, I mean, he, he clearly trusted us enough to go in our basement and drink our wine, though, so, yeah. But we couldn't be his regent. Uh, so now we're going to be the regent for his son, uh, not for very long, just for not even quite two years. But yeah, we're going to be his regent. So we're going to go and read this. So with my liege, King Yevis, a mere child, it is abundantly, abundantly clear that he cannot effectively govern the kingdom of France. He needs a firm, steady hand to guide him, at least still his majority. As this situation is likely to persist for some time, the realm needs to know who to turn to when King Yevis cannot personally discharge ju justice. We need someone to serve permanently as regent. Naturally, that someone is me. All right. So we can say that we'll start our rule at once, and that will swing the uh, scales of power by five towards the entrenched regency. Or instead, we could just say all recognition and gain the prestige. All right, so yeah, this benefited us in a way that we didn't expect it to. We are now the regent. And interestingly, we're getting the advice for the regents because I've never actually been a regent yet in this version, since of course you gotta have a liege to do so. Uh, so yeah, we're acting as regent for our liege. And so these are all the different reasons why he might be the regent. And we'll get special borrowed powers that we can use on our liege and fellow vassals. Your leash always has veto powers over these borrowed powers. Using these powers on your fellow vassals may be seen as an overreach of power, giving you a strife opinion penalty. All right, so let's take a look at your regency. Yeah, we'll go through this, might as well, since uh, this is our first time being a regent in this series too, obviously. Uh, so these are the scales of power. The further the scales favor you, you will have access to more borrowed powers, and ending the regency will be more difficult. And hopefully we can be the region for a long time. Uh, you can directly swing the scales in your favor with this swing scales button. Your liege can give you a mandate, which will give you opportunities to improve the realm. If you handle these opportunities well, you'll tip the scales of power in your favor. If the conditions at start of the regency are no longer true, your liege can try to end it. If the scales of power are strongly in your favor, you may even be able to resist them ending the regency, perhaps starting a war for their primary title. As a regent, you could try using your borrowed powers on your liege or your fellow vassals. If you don't wish to antagonize your liege, you can simply react to the opportunities that appear and your liege may reward you for your loyalty. So now this is a really interesting situation since, you know, this is what we wanted the whole time. First of all, our character's getting recognition and we have the opportunity to try and seize more power for ourselves. And so currently we have it at a, a value of five and it will swing by 0 0.25 until the, it bounces out at 50. That'll probably be like right here in the middle. So to get you up to the next levels, which we'll take a look at those whenever we get to them. Uh, but yeah, we can go and try and swing the scales now. Our loyalty is situational. Because we don't really like our liege, apparently. He likes us, though. He likes us quite a bit, actually. Uh, largely due to our fame level. But nobody likes the fact that we're a low blower. He's humble. Well, that's interesting. He's greedy, just, and humble. So yeah, we can go ahead and try and swing the scales now. He's currently got a set on promoting authority. So to swing the scales, we'd have to pay 220 to him with this option by leveraging gold. You can instead leverage prestige, which we have a lot of. And then uh, it'll swing by 10. He'll become frustrated. We lose uh, use piety, which we don't really have the piety. Prestige is what we have a lot of. You can also use a hook if you have that. Or we can ask for intercession from your, your head of faith. Uh, but the Pope doesn't really like us. Yeah, let's lever leverage the prestige. That makes the most sense since we have that you know, stacked up. Uh, so yeah, we're going to swing the scales in our favor. And so... We just need to get it up to 20 to get to the next level. 
Uh, so we'll get that fairly soon, I think. How much is it every, uh, is that every month? 0.25? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so that will, that'll take a little bit of time. Uh, cause remember we can't roll for very long. And so in this case, once you get to this level here, the entrenched regency needs the region's consent to be dismissed. So we have to get it there. So when's the next time we can swing the scales in our favor? Uh, so unavailable until 11.23. Damn. We'd have to do the math. Basically 0.25. Uh, so you're getting one every four months. And we need to get to five. So that's 20 months. And how long until he's of age? We might just have enough time to get there. Because yeah, we won't be able to do the swings of, uh, you know, do that, that option again, uh, swing the scales. Uh, we won't be able to do that again in time. So we're just, you know, relying on the, the monthly bonus. But maybe there'll be some events that allow us to do it as well. It's going to be a close one, guys. We'll just have to see. Because, yeah, I assume we'll get different events. Uh, also, we got an invitation to be the, the chancellor, which makes sense. We'll get that back. And the kitten. So I'm outside with Count Gilham. This is our son and heir. As he suddenly disappears. But before I have time to really worry, he comes bounding back, clutching a small kitchen. A kitten in his hands. He's got a small kitchen in his hands. <laughs> a small kitten in his hands. Doesn't he have a dog, too? He's going to have a pet dog and a pet cat. He's a lover of, of animals. Uh, so he says, Raymond, Raymond, look what I found. It's a gift for you. Why is everybody call us, why are, do our children call us by our name rather than father? Uh, so this is actually a, a gift for us. And we get intrigue and learning. I mean, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want a cat. Personally, I'm not really a cat person. I prefer dogs. We don't actually have any uh, dogs or cats in our house. We have a pet rabbit. Uh, my kids uh, love the rabbits. Real low maintenance, in a sense. Uh, rabbits do require, you know, some care and stuff. Uh, but compared to, like, dogs or cats, they, they're a little bit lower maintenance. Uh, they use a litter box like a cat. And, uh, you know, you just got to feed them and, you know, play with them and let them get exercise and that kind of stuff. But uh, they don't, or at least our rabbit doesn't, like, destroy our, our stuff like cats and dogs can both do. And doesn't need to go for a walk or anything like that. And we haven't had any health issues with them either. But yeah, we have a pet rabbit. Uh, but yeah, that has nothing to do with uh, Raymond here. I, I think he'd be fine with the cat. And you get some nice bonuses from this as well. Intrigue and learning. So yeah, thank you. Now we got to name the cat, of course. What would we name this cat? We could just pick a name. Yeah, because I'm not really liking any of these. I feel like we would name her the lioness because... The king, who we killed, his nickname was the lion. And we just, you know, we just did that. And now we got this cat. So we're going to name her <laughs> in honor of the king. So she's going to be a lioness. What a great name. So we now have a pet cat. And does that give you interaction, a decision here? It does. So you can pet her and then reduce your, your stress. We got a little bit of stress right now, uh, but I don't think it's necessary to, to do that at the moment. We took it a little bit higher. I don't know how much it reduces it by. Uh, but kill him. Came of age, finally. Uh, so how did he do? Level four. I wasn't sure with us set as his uh, his teacher, his guardian, because, you know, obviously we don't have a uh, you know, very high learning or martial, but he's also a military engineer. So that's a great trait for him to have. And so, yeah, he's going to be leading his own troops. This is Marshall should be pretty good. And that hasn't been added in there just yet. There we go. Beautiful. So he's got 16 Marshall uh, at such a young age. So he's going to move through his educations faster. Uh, through his perk, I mean. He'll move through his perks faster. And, yeah, he's going to be a really good commander. Now, he doesn't have good prowess. So we'll see which route he goes on the, on the perks. Yeah, he's a fantastic heir. 
Okay, so um, although I will admit that his uh, traits overall aren't uh, exciting or anything like that. So mandate, martial donatives. So the major settlements of France offer no end of places to recruit sell swords. The market square where I stand, tossing a purse of monies at a mob of them, is just one of many. Ordinarily, these ad hoc warrior bands are absorbed into larger mercenary groups or hired to bolster the private levies of minor lords in war, an inefficient arrangement. My mandate as regent requires me to swell the armies of King Yves, so I find myself trying to recruit some more directly. All right, so our first, our first event as regent. Uh, so this is an option that's available because we're Garius. This coin is nothing compared to loot yarn. That's how we try and talk them into to joining. And uh, men and arms maintenance will be reduced for the king, not for ourselves. And then we'll increase our scales of power uh, by five, but we'll lose 75 gold. And we do have to do the grand wedding soon. So that's something to consider. So it looks like no matter what, we're gonna lose 75 gold though. So that's probably gonna be the best option uh, because this is a 22% chance of success and it's an abuse of power. You say serve me, serve the king, either way you'll get paid. Now that does bolster uh, our bonus as well though, but again, not a high chance of success there. I think we'd go with this one as the gregarious option. It's just a bummer that, uh, you know, we needed that money for the, the grand wedding. And so now that was enough. That's all we needed to uh, get to the level two. And so Diarchs, which is us, we're the Diarch, can try to give negative county modifiers to fellow vassals, receiving gold if successful. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the entrenched regency needs the region's consent to be dismissed, so that's the, the big bonus there. We could just tell them no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what we would do. Uh, we would get a free extra change to our vassal contract if it can still be edited in the same way as using a hook on their liege. So we'll probably want to do that immediately then. Go ahead and check some of these out. Uh, so first, let's talk to the king and modify our contract. So we owe him more levies. So it could change that back to normal. Could also lower our taxes. I just want to change this back to normal though, using our borrowed powers. Uh, of course, doing this abuses position of trust, and so he's going to be very unhappy with us. We probably want to go ahead and improve opinion with him after, and we're still swaying the archbishop, or the bishop, excuse me. I don't think we need to do that anymore, so maybe we'll try and boost in his opinion here. But yeah, let's get our levies back. Not that I really care about the levies so much, um, but you know, obviously. Having more troops and him having less is, is helpful. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll see, uh, I mean, I guess not. Now as a regent, I was gonna say, I'm hoping we'll see more people join our faction, but as a regent, would we want to? Now, of course, we don't have to do this. We could also, there's other options available. Uh, like if we wanna like force uh, council rights, so they have to put us on the council, uh, force the war declaration, so that we can declare war regardless of the our legion's crown authority. That'd be an option as well. You know, keep him from revoking our titles. Which, of course, we'd just rebel if he did that anyways. So, yeah, these would all be options. Now, if we were imprisoned, I suppose, as a, uh, you know, if we had broken law or whatever, then, then he'd be able to do that without, uh, I mean, he'd still have to imprison us, I guess, but, but he might not be successful in trying to, to stop him. So uh, yeah, there's some, some good options here. Like this would allow us to, to start expanding again. Because as of right now, I think Crown Authority is still high. It hasn't changed uh, anytime recently. We can also pass our own high Crown Authority as well. So I suppose we'll go ahead and do that while I'm in here. We'll get more vassal taxes and levies. Of course, the opinions are gonna drop and that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. But yeah, he's still sitting at level three here. I did want to take a look at how the factions are doing. There's so much stuff to to look at here. So yeah, nobody else has joined our faction. The Liberty faction has increased. Our, our wife is involved as well. Okay. So yeah, they might rebel here. Which obviously would not be a good thing. Because our wife would be arrested and probably lose titles. Because yeah, they would not win this. I hope they don't. 
attempt that rebellion. That's no chance of, of succeeding, I think. Alright, so, um, so yeah. There's a lot of options here. And I almost feel like this would be the better one, because we get those back anyway when whenever we're independent. And so I feel like this would be the better option. So that we can declare war now. Yeah, let's do that, and that'll allow us to increase, you know, we can increase our levies by taking over more territory. Uh, so yeah, we'll do it this way. So now we'll be able to declare war whenever we want. Uh, also, we pay 50% less for cast as spell eyes within the realm. So that's another nice bonus. So yeah, let's go and do that. And so he's not going to be happy with us. Let me just take a look. Yeah, this is, is fine. So let's go ahead and instead sway him. Oh, we can't. He's still a child. That's right. So that's not an option. I guess we can boost him one more time. Let me see if there's anybody in the council who might want to boost. No, not really. So yeah, we'll keep on boosting him. And... Yeah. We know we, we did that. Not sure why I got a notification for that. Uh, we can steal gold from our fellow vassals. That was the other option that opened up here. So apparently can't just do it to anybody. Is it only like uh, duchy level characters? That's what it seems like. So it's an abuse of power, of course. So it causes strife with our peer vassals. So they have to be up here, I see. So maybe if you're a count, you could do it with uh, other counts. And would be able to do it against a, a duke. So this one here doesn't have a percentage because you're committing significant political prestige. So 350. Uh, but this one here you're only doing a little bit and so there's a 50-50 chance that you'll succeed or fail. Well this one here is based on diplomacy so 99% chance you'll succeed. Okay. And of course the, the duke or duchess you do that to will obviously not be happy with you. Uh, but yeah we're actually not uh, against any of these these dukes or duchesses here. So we're not going to do that. And besides, we're not trying to, you know, <laughs> go that far, I feel. Uh, See, so yeah, we're not going to turn everybody against us. That's not our intent here. We want everybody to support our regency. But yeah, I did want to see uh, what that was. Uh, so we can now host the Grand Wedding. We're going to go ahead and take a look at how much this is going to cost. And we'll want to have this in Toulouse as well, in our capital. And this will lead to gold gain. Yeah, you can kind of throw it wherever you wanted to, but yeah, I don't know where, why we'd want to do it anywhere else. So we we'll do it in, in Toulouse. And I mean, we don't need to look at this just yet. I want to find out what the cost is going to be here. So this is the entertainment options here. And so this increases uh, opinion with these two types of vassals and also gives us more prestige. So you can kind of reduce it or increase it. Increasing it also changes whose opinion you're increasing it with and gives you eager reveler trade experience. But yeah, it's pretty expensive. But as of right now, it's only 218. But let's look at our other, other options. This is food and drinks. And so here's the choices here. We won't be able to do all of them. We don't have enough money, I don't think, to have the highest level in all. Uh, but this is a bonus to stress loss. Increases health bonuses here. Also increases opinion with everybody. And then the wedding venue. So this is how you get the, the gracious host. Or you can get the magnificent host. Which, this is where you'd probably want to spend the money. So you get the higher renown and prestige. And yeah, I think that's the one you'd want to do. It's very expensive. So it'd be 398. And so you wouldn't be able to do anything else, I don't think. I don't think we'd have the money for it. Yeah, it would be just short. Yeah, just short on doing it. We could sit and wait a little bit. I think we have some time, several years, where we have to do do the marriage, but they're both of age. She was not that impressive, unfortunately. She's a craven, lazy, just, and she's a flamboyant, flamboyant trickster. So it didn't do so well here. That's the alliance with Burgundy, though. We're not going to go back on it, of course. But yeah, she's not very impressive, honestly. 
Well, that's okay. This is not about stats and all that kind of stuff. This is about an alliance with a powerful, uh, you know, potentially rival vassal. And hopefully this will make us uh, long-term allies instead. I was saying, we wouldn't be able to increase any more unless we waited. Uh, but then again, we might not be able to... We might not be able to do anything if we wait too long, because you never know uh, what would happen, what events are going to pop up. So we'd need, is it 488? I feel like we could probably get to that. But is it worth it? Here you get the higher opinion. And bonus to stress loss, but yeah, that's not really an issue. Increased health bonuses is nice, I suppose. With this option, I don't think uh, that's worth doing. Yeah, I don't think we'd do that one. We do want something quite extravagant, though. But yeah, I can see doing doing this one here. But do we want to wait? And then you have no money for if anything else pops up as well. So I think we're probably just going to do the, the hardcore uh, wedding venue here. Silver and gold. Yeah, I think that's the one we'll do. You know, the most expensive one. And the one with the most bonuses. And I think we'll just leave the rest as is. Generous feast and acrobats and musicians. And so we'll have a little bit of money here. And we don't have to wait any any longer. Uh, we just want them to get married. Uh, so now we can uh, determine what we want to do as our intent. Could just do recreation. I don't know if there's anybody we actually want to murder here. Again, our character's really not. He's not his father. Oops. So yeah, I don't see us doing that. Or seducing. Could try and gain an alliance. I suppose that might be what we want to do, because we're going to get stress loss probably regardless from this. So we could instead try and gain an alliance, but you know what I didn't think about, guys? Our uh, king is not able to attend, which is important. As you guys recall, we got that legacy where we have increased chance to generate a temporary strong hook on lieges who like you at grand weddings. Now, he doesn't like us a lot, but it is in the positive. And it also get boosted, and it is going to decline as well. So I almost feel like we should wait until the king's of age so he can attend. Because I don't know that he can attend this as a child. I assume not. I mean, we could take a look real quick, but yeah, I assume as a child he's not going to be able to attend this. So let me just take a peek here at the, the guest. Sorting by rank. So yeah, these are all the kings. So you have uh, the Queen of Aragon, the King of Leon, and the King of, of England. But uh, our king would not be able to attend. So I think we should wait. We have time. So let me just take a look how much time we have. Three years. So let's just wait, guys, and let's hope that they don't uh, get in any trouble before the marriage. And that would give us more time to raise up the money, too. And we also formed an alliance with this character here. Not entirely sure why. Huh, yeah, I'm not sure why we, we have an alliance with him. Oh, okay. He's probably, yeah, arranged to to marry our, our granddaughter here. And so this is the, the Duke of Champagne. He's heard good things about us, and he's interested in starting a writing or a written conversation. I hope this letter finds you willing, for I'm awaiting your swift reply. So when did he become the Duke here? Uh, so who was the, the former Duke? It wasn't his father. That's interesting. Let's take a look at when he got his title here. Inherited via abdication. Okay, so it was his father. But he had to abdicate. wonder why he abdicated. Was it a health issue or did he lose a rebellion? I assume he probably lost a rebellion here. Okay, so a very different situation has emerged over here in Champagne. With the new character here. Who's also a lunatic. <laughs> okay. Alright, so this is his son. And so remember, it's his brother that we currently have. I guess this one here. Uh, that we currently have the marriage with. Okay. So, very interesting situation here.
And then you have this other brother who got one of the counties. But they each got a county, it seems. Well, he just got uh, the one county. So despite being a duke, he only holds one county currently. All right, so yeah, this is uh, the options we have available here. Uh, we can start exchanging letters with him, and we'll increase opinion with him. Uh, we can frame the duke's letter in our hall. I don't know that we'd do that, but it'd get us prestige. Or we can politely decline, which has a great Gary's character. We want to do that. So yeah, we'll do this. And uh, we'll continue to receive letters from him, and uh, we'll also increase opinion with him. And we got a notification over here. But yeah, it looks like we're not going to do the Grand Wedding this episode. We'll see. We'll see if we can get there. We got so many things popping up, though, that it seems like we're not going to get there in time. So thank you for the swift response. I'm looking forward to, your, to our correspondence. Please, I implore you, pick the first subject for us to discuss. So we can discuss the finer points of etiquette. Leading uh, with a topic you are knowledgeable about might impress him. Uh, please tell me about the blessings of family. You've heard rumors this topic is close to his heart. Or I'll send you a gift to show my appreciation. We obviously wouldn't want to do that. I'm trying to save money right now, which we do have enough to, to have an even grander wedding now. Um, so probably just go with uh, etiquette. Yeah, we'll go with that one. And unfortunately... Our daughter was murdered. But by who? I mean, she did have a bastard before she got married. Maybe he killed her. She disappeared without a trace. Was she walled up in a basement too? Jesus. Alright, so we get into a ton of stress because of that. Let's pause this. Alright, so yeah, this is a possible vendetta. Did we find out who did it? So we no longer have the alliance with the Duke anymore because of that. Okay. And a faction was created against the king as well to install Philip on the throne instead. Is that the Philip? Let's just take a look at this faction. <laughs> Is Philip going to come back? Obviously we wouldn't want this. I'm on the wrong. Wrong menu here. Obviously, we wouldn't want this as a powerful regent, so we'd be opposed to this. Uh, very much opposed to this. It's one thing to get uh, independence. Yes, that's the Philip. Wow. Okay, so so far it's just the one member. Okay, so this is uh, the uncle. The king's uncle. Maybe he's unhappy because he didn't get the regency, that we got it instead. Maybe he's unhappy that uh, we are kind of rule in France right now, rather than a, a member of the Capet dynasty. I don't know. But yeah, he just has the one county, so he's not a problem yet. But this could become a problem later down the road. And yeah, just my, my whole feelings on the situation has changed to a degree. I'm going to keep this open, but yeah, I mean, as a powerful regent, there's no reason why you'd want to rebel against him right now. There's a lot of options that will open up if we can keep control of the Regency on the long term. So we got an event, Allure of Vendetta. The hole my daughter's death has left in my heart remains clawed open each time I think of her foul killer and the justice that remains to be served. Day after day, the cruel logic of revenge dominates my thinking, filled each night in fitful dreams where I see Walther, is he the one who killed her? And all of House... Hohenstaufen, racked by the same grief my family endures. Did he kill her? It seems like he might have. Why else would we be getting notified of this? So this would start a feud against the Hohenstaufen dynasty. And she, I'm guessing she's the head of that dynasty. Yeah. So she'd become a rival. She's just a mere count. So yeah, she'd become a rival. We say love, friendship, family. Of course, that's our dynasty's words. And we lose a penny with her. And House Toulouse gains a house feud. So the house is having a running feud with a rival family. Hostile schemes against the target house will be slightly more likely to succeed. Uh, we also get higher intrigue and hostile scheme resistance. But uh, we'll gain more stress as well. Or you say, Walther won't get away with this. So we target him. Like, who is this character and why... Did he kill our daughter? What benefit did he gain from that? And he's the one who he did it, apparently. Huh. It could just be because he's 
vengeful. Maybe she did something to him. I'm not entirely sure. Like, do we know? Yeah, I don't know how we found out that secret. How we found out who did it? Are we just assuming? And so we can say nothing and bring her back, which that arrogant character we wouldn't do. We would do that anyways. Yeah, I guess we could do the house too. That just seems kind of fun and interesting. Just kind of blame the whole dynasty for this, uh, rather than just him. Although we should, he should be our rival as well. If he's the one who did it. So maybe we'd want to assassinate him. Oh, he's a guest here. So we can uh, arrest him, right? 56% chance of success. It is an act of tyranny, but probably worth doing. I'm not going to recruit him to court. All right, so let's do this first, but... Uh, Oops, damn it. <laughs> My bad, guys. Damn it, I didn't mean to click on that. I meant to uh, instead mark him or leave him up here so that I could, uh, you know, interact with him after we did the house feud, but I clicked on it. All right, well, it is what it is, guys. Uh, apparently, I'm doing that consistently, clicking on the wrong thing. Uh, we can challenge him to a fight. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to kill him because it's non-lethal. He'd, he would, uh, would accept, though. So he could do that. He could also just straight up imprison him. And no chance of success now because of him being a rival, probably. Yeah. So yeah, he can't do it that way. Yeah, it's a real bummer that I did that. Yeah, that's a shame. Okay, well, we can attempt to, to murder him. But let's challenge him to a fight. At the very least, we want to beat him over his head. <laughs> so, so we'll do that for now. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that we clicked on that. It resulted in a couple different issues. Oh, apparently he didn't like my response here. Are you trying to make me feel like an idiot? Your last letter was so full of obscura, I could not follow one sentence in three. And to think, I used to value your friendship. Oh, that didn't go well. Okay, so we lost opinion with him. But we did get Diplomacy Lifestyle Experience Points. Alright, so here's our battle with Walther. Uh, so, spot an opportunity, he lunges forward and headbutts me hard in the face and a real backwards wrong-footed. So he did the headbutt. And so we get that dual handicap, unfortunately. So we're going to do the knife-to-hand one. So that gives us that bonus, and we probably would be trying to stab this guy. <laughs> the high chance of success, though. So we'll take that option. Then. All right, so as far as his uh, prowess, it's absolutely horrible now because of the, the penalties. Yeah, it was eight, I think. Let me just take a look here. Yeah, it was six plus the two from the vengeful. So yeah, that's why he's sitting at zero. And ours is 30 even with the penalty. So I mean, we are significantly better uh, at dueling. So our form is good only with small errors. His stance is a disaster. My opponent is still holding off my blows well, but he seems close to faltering. So you say better men than you have tried raking my guard. Instead say that's the best you've got, you can't even hit me. Or we can instead say you think you can beat someone as famous as me. Alright, well let's... I mean this would result in him getting stress. He'd be mocking him. And these are all low chances of success anyways. And I guess he, we would maybe want to uh, to mock him. So yeah, we'll go with this one. And we did achieve victory, as expected. It's beautiful, really. Using someone's cringe at their own inadequacy to open a gap in their guard. The definition of a self-fulfilling prophecy, I'll bet with a little help. From there, a single saw blow to Walther's sword hand knocks his weapon loose. I whirl my own axe with a flourish, preparing to cut him down. I can't resist the urge to get in one final jab. Now, what does the loser say? Yield. As it turns out, yield, yield, yield. I am victorious. So we wounded him. We also gained some uh, experience for the foot trait in Hass the Looter. Alright, excellent. So we beat him, but he's still our rival. We still need to, to tank him out. Not sure how he'd want to go about 
doing that outside of just assassinating him. There's really not much uh, other options since we can't arrest him. So that's not an option. Yeah, he would just run. So maybe we can attempt. Well, that's interesting. Here's the power sharing where you can invite conspirators to a, a coup. Uh, but yeah, we don't have a strong enough skills power to do that. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'd just want to try and assassinate him. If he tried to kill our daughter, I mean, this is one reason why we would want to assassinate somebody. So I think we're going to go ahead and start up this scheme here. And we already got uh, an agent to join us here. Maybe we'll be able to kill him in the wedding. Although that's not really what I want to focus on. Uh, we can give him money. But I don't actually want to do it that way. And... What is she currently doing? She's already supporting schemes. All right, well, we can go ahead and look for a secret here in Toulouse, because I think that's where he's located currently, because he's a guest here. I just don't know why he he did it in the first place. It's crazy. All right, so yeah, he's uh, still currently in our capital, so we'll see if we can find any secrets to try and get some, some hooks, kind of force somebody to assist us with this. Because right now our support is pretty low. Yeah, not a good chance here at the moment. His intrigue's not even great. Surprise it's you know such a low chance despite uh, him not having high intrigue. I mean he is vengeful, but uh, yeah, I'm a little surprised that we don't have better better odds here. So yeah, we got the money for the wedding. We're just waiting for the king to get old enough. Uh, we lost a lot of stress from beating our rivals well, so that was a nice uh, bonus there. We also got a diplomacy perk. Excellent. Uh, so we're going for the embassies next. So we'll be able to learn languages better, and each alliance grants a diplomacy point for maximum five, so we know that's going to boost it a lot, up to 33. So that's fantastic. Uh, also, we swayed him again. Don't really need to sway him any further. Oh, but he did join our scheme. Maybe because he likes us so much? I, I suppose that's why. So that increased our chance of success here. All right, so that's nice. That was worth doing, I suppose. Uh, we could try swaying other people that uh, could potentially be agents because there's nobody else really to sway until the king is of age. So yeah, I suppose that's what we would want to do. That's not something you see generally. So this guest here, yeah, she refuses because she likes him. Well, this guest here is pretty close. So maybe just sway him. I don't know how long he's going to stick around. But we can try. Also, you can sometimes get uh, events when you're swaying guests where they'll join your court as well, which he'd be useful to have because he's a fantastic knight. In fact, we'd probably want to recruit him to court. But, uh, God, he's expensive. So yeah, maybe we'll get an event that will recruit him to court. Oh, and this is his spouse here. I see. Yeah, he's a fantastic knight. And he's friends with this guy here. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try and sway him. You never know, maybe we'll get a, one of those good events. Again, they're pretty rare. Maybe we'll get one of those events where he just wants to join, join our court. All right, so looking at the king here, as far as how old he is, that's right, it's December. So he, he will have a year after this birthday. Now, we're not making any progress because of all these events that are popping up. Uh, so, we've uh, seen this event before. This is with the, the Duke here. So we wouldn't want to agree to disagree because we're arrogant. So yeah, the relationship with him is changing drastically here. Uh, we could instead say, it is as I say it is, that's the end of it. We'll lose stress as an arrogant character. And we'll get this modifier here, increase the diplomacy, but decrease in learning. Also give some other bonuses and penalties there. Or we could do the diplomacy challenge to convince him. Which is probably what we'd do. 99% chance that we'll lose stress. And then he'll get that penalty to his learning and he'll also be annoyed at us. But I feel like that's the one we'd do. We do win the debate, as expected. Uh, social manipulation. So the first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's notice, or a moment's thought. But my vassal has grown bolder. Her challenges no longer pass unnoticed among my vassals. 
She is testing my limits. The others are sure to follow unless I give her a taste of her own medicine. I don't know who this mare is. Yeah, we can ignore her and steal her ideas. We'll get a diplomacy, uh, 50 diplomacy lifestyle experience points. Uh, we also get a weak hook on her. And we'll increase opinion. These are possible outcomes, though. So she might not be fooled. And she might even outwit us. Uh, all, all problems will be blamed on her. You know, I don't even know what this is about here. So it's based on her traits, though, it seems. Okay. You could also say, how dare you challenge the Duke. We'll gain stress. We'll get dread as well, but we'll gain stress because we're gregarious and fickle. We're just trying to find out how best to manipulate her. And so this is if she's unassertive, lethargic, or unambitious, which she's not. Any of those things. So this is if she wants people to think well of her, which she doesn't. And this would be if you're, you know, you're basically insulting her appearance, but she doesn't have anything here. But that really seems like the only option available, because I don't think she cares about any of these other ones. So yeah, we'll go with that one. We'll see if we succeed. Uh, and we failed. So we just got the opinion decrease there. So another one of her secret affairs has been revealed. She's got an affair with this character here. He's a, a spy master as well. Alright, so we can say these crimes can't go unpunished guards, and then we'll arrest her. Remember, she is our own spy master. Or you say these accusations are not but malice and lies, and we'll increase opinions with them. Yeah, I mean, we'd probably go with that. Yeah, there's really no reason to think that we'd, uh, feel like we have to arrest her. We're not like a just character or anything. I'll say we'll just go with this one. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, we won't be able to do the, the grand wedding yet. We still gotta wait one more year. He is 15 now, he just had his birthday. Uh, didn't make a lot of progress uh, given all the, the different events that happened. We had a lot of things happen though, despite the lack of progress in the time. A very eventful episode overall. And yeah, we're the, the regent now. And so remember, we can't swing the scales of power again until the 12th of February, so that'll be after he's of age. And so we'd already have done the, uh, the wedding at that point. And so yeah, we're just waiting uh, until the king is of age here. And so one more year, we'll do the wedding. And we have plenty of time to do so. And we should have a, a lot of money saved up so we can have a big, elaborate, grand wedding here. And that should be exciting. Uh, but hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.